Scientists have discovered something in Africa that shatters our image of human evolution. We were not the first species to understand complex relationships and develop cultural rights, nor were we the first to believe in life after death. But who were the mysterious creatures that reached these milestones many millennia before us, and why are scientists afraid to acknowledge the traces of the past? With every fossil that researchers recover, a new piece of the puzzle is added to the overall picture of human history. And yet the most fundamental questions about our own past still remain largely unanswered. Where exactly do we come from? How old are we really? When did we begin our triumphal march to become the dominant species? A new hotly debated theory now suggests that some cultural rites and customs were practiced significantly earlier than previously assumed, but neither by Homo sapiens nor by Neanderthals, but by Homo naledi. Since the previously unknown species of the genus Homo appeared on the research scene in 2015, it has been a huge puzzle for experts. The fossils in question were recovered in the Rising Star Cave in South Africa, within a region commonly regarded as the Cradle of Humanity. But how did the bodies actually end up in the inaccessible cave complex? Did they fall to their deaths here? Did they get lost and not find their way out again? Well, not necessarily. Some experts are firmly convinced that the fossils did not end up in the cave by chance. Instead, Homo naledi would have deliberately placed his dead here, and thus carried out the first known burials in the history of the Earth, a thesis that completely overturns everything we thought we knew about the development of the Homo genus. As already briefly mentioned, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens were previously considered to be the first to bid farewell to their dead in special rituals. Burials 100,000 years before humans, the bones, which are up to 335,000 years old, were found in a part of the cave system that is difficult to access. The only access is a long, extremely narrow, steeply sloping shaft, which the researchers only call the chute. As many of the skeletons are practically intact, combined with the special location, the assumption arises that the lifeless bodies were carefully carried and then carefully laid on the ground. What was particularly remarkable was what a CT scan brought to light. Close to the right hand of a dead man was a stone that looked like a worked tool. In other words, the deceased was given a grave gift. This leads to another groundbreaking conclusion. Homo naledi did not believe that death was the end. However, other researchers point to the small brains of this species and vehemently criticize the burial theory. If Homo naledi really did reach this evolutionary milestone long before us, we are threatened with a loss of uniqueness. Until now, the burial of the dead had given humans a special distinction. But were we really among the first to understand complex relationships and recognize the significance of death? Are scientists afraid of the profound insights that will follow if we have to answer this with an unequivocal no? Well, who knows how the fossil finds of the future will answer this question. The pyramids are 7,000 years old. You thought most of the pyramids were in Egypt? Well, you thought wrong. With 200 to 250 examples, most of these structures are in Sudan. The oldest pyramid built in Sudan is probably that of the Nubian Pharaoh Pi in the cemetery of al Kuru. However, the tapered witnesses were by no means the only thing that the inhabitants of ancient Nubia left behind for posterity. In 1907, the British archaeologist Malaby Cecil Firth came across something that shattered our conventional view of history. Found in a tomb of the so-called Nakata I culture, the artifact is currently kept in the Museum of Nubia in southern Egypt. There it is listed under the inconspicuous name, Painted Ostrich Egg. But is the find really so unspectacular? In detail, the roots of the Nakata culture go back almost 7,000 years, almost 2,000 years further than those of ancient Egypt. A period of origin that also coincides with the age of the Nubian grave goods found. The world-famous pyramids of Giza were built around 4,500 years ago. With these key dates in mind, we are now faced with a fundamental question. How can a 7,000-year-old artifact show something that did not officially exist at the time? On the ostrich egg, for example, we see a series of triangular shapes adorned with horizontal lines. In combination with the zigzag structure to the right, which is commonly interpreted as the Nile, 
Many viewers come to the conclusion that we are clearly looking at the monumental buildings of the Giza Plateau. Or to put it another way, since the Nubian egg is 7,000 years old, this must also apply to the pyramids of the ancient Egyptians. Although the culture of the Pharaonic Empire's inhabitants is still shrouded in mystery, and their official age is sometimes severely questioned, mainstream historians continue to cling to their convictions. According to them, the three objects that dominate the landscape do not represent pyramids, but rudimentary images of mountains. However, the pointed shapes, and especially the horizontal lines, do not really fit in with the natural face of a mountain. Moreover, we should not forget at this point that the officially confirmed finds also give cause for skepticism. In contrast to grave goods and mummies, three artifacts were recovered from the Pyramid of Khufu, a strange sphere, a bronze hook and some fragments of cedar wood. However, radiocarbon dating revealed that, unlike the pyramid, the wood is not 4,500 years old, but over 5,000 years old. The researcher's thin explanation is that the wood was probably extremely rare and precious, and was therefore stored or reused for a very long time. Well, if the ancient Egyptians used one and the same piece of wood for half a millennium, then they were not only the masters of pyramids, but also of sustainability. A 200,000-year-old city? When did mankind actually begin to settle in large, permanent settlements? Well, the conventional sources answer this question as follows. With a founding period in the 10th millennium BC, Jericho is considered the oldest known city in the world. While a city wall was finally added around the year 8000 BC, around 3000 people once lived here. However, a number of enigmatic ruins have been found in Mozambique that cast serious doubt on the official account of the city's development. According to this, we are dealing with the civilizational traces of an unknown culture that are, believe it or not, 200,000 years old. Furthermore, the proponents of this dating claim that the site once belonged to an ancient city that stretched for many kilometers. But how the hell is that possible? Despite all the Graham Hancocks in the world, the Sumerians are still considered the first people to make the leap to advance civilization 6,000 years ago. While the walls of the structures are made of dolerite, the calculation of the erosion rate revealed that they were built around 200,000 years ago. But of course, this assessment is anything but uncontroversial among experts. The huge, concentric stone walls are best seen from a bird's eye view. While the wall is only 3.5 meters high in some places, it is said to have been significantly higher 200,000 years ago. No less mysterious is the fact that a symbol has been immortalized on one of the walls, apparently depicting an ancient Egyptian god. Conservative historians believe that the Egyptians were the first to worship these deities. Alternative circles, however, consider it much more likely that the pharaohs picked up their myths from the cultures in southern Africa. I wonder if this also applied to the Sumerians. Some controversial Sumerian texts reveal that eight rulers once fell from the sky and ruled for more than 200,000 years. The Blue Alien Stones, the year is 1990 and a certain Angelo Petoni is in Sierra Leone. During his stay, the locals were supposed to show Petoni something that made him question his common sense, a series of bright blue stones that were supposed to be gods. According to local legend, the celestial beings fell from grace and were petrified as punishment. They were then cast out of the heavenly realm and smashed to earth. However, as Angelo Petoni was a geologist and a man of science, he decided to send the stones to laboratories in Italy, Germany, and Japan for analysis. The professional examination revealed that the formations were made up of 77% oxygen and 20% carbon and lime. The experts were also able to detect traces of silicone and other materials. What is merely a list of different components for the layman is a very unexpected finding from a scientific point of view. The stones differed significantly in their structure from the rock that occurs on Earth. Against this background, it appears that the objects do not actually come from this world, but have their origin in the gigantic expanses of space. Moreover, carbon dating revealed that the sky stones came to Earth between 2500 and 17,000 years ago. Three billion-year-old artifacts? There are two opinions regarding the mysterious Klerkstorp spheres. Either we are dealing here only with the result of geological processes, 
or with proof that everything we think we know about the evolution of life on Earth is wrong. Recovered by miners from the Wonderstone Silver Mine near the South African town of Ottostal, the 200 or so spheres are between 1 and 4 centimeters in size. While the objects are probably made of the mineral hematite, the age of the surrounding layers has been dated to 3 billion years. Strangely, some of the spheres are adorned with circumferential notches and contain a mysterious white substance that immediately disintegrates into dust as soon as the shell breaks open. Advocates of the artifact theory point not only to the strikingly round shape, but also to the fact that the structures are said to be perfectly balanced. Roelf Marx, the curator of the Klerksdorp Museum, says that even NASA has admitted that such objects can only be produced in zero gravity. Support us with a subscription and never miss a new video again.